somebody comes to your office and says, I'm having um, racing thoughts. Right. Like, racing thoughts. Like I can't, I can't, I can't calm my, uh, my, my busy mind. How do you help them calm their busy mind? Well, first of all, somebody with racing thoughts rarely asks me that question when they come in to see me because all they want to do is offload. <laughs> so they might be talking at a very fast rate, blah, 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 blah. And they might be talking from uh, uh, higher up in their body rather than deeper down in their, in their belly. And usually if somebody's in a very high state of anxiety or fear, the first thing that's really important to that person is they just need to be heard. And so, you know, anxiety, fear takes up a lot of space. So what I always do is I, I create spaciousness for that person mm -hmm. and I give them the message, either implicit or explicit, mm -hmm. you know, I'm here with you, I'm listening to you, um, take your time, take as much time as you need to tell me whatever it is you want me to know. And yeah. sometimes I don't get a word in edgeways, <laughs> you know, and, and that might go on for a whole session or it might go on for several sessions. Mm. Eventually there's, there's a pause uh, in the, in the, in the conversation where I might ask the person a question like, so, so what does that feel like? Let's say they're talking all about their self doubts Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't think I can do this. I'm not good enough. I'm, um, you know, somebody told me this other thing about me and it was awful, you know. And so they will talk themselves into a state of anxiety. And I might say to them, oh, what you just said just then about this thing that happened, as you were saying that, what does it feel like? Mm -hmm. And what that does, that question it is invites them to pause and to notice what's happening inside. And they notice that, oh, the more I talk about this thing, this bad thing that happened, mm. the more I feel anxious. And the thing is, is if, if a person is anxious, the most important thing that you can do is to feel it, ride with it, allow it to arise and pass away, because all emotions arise and pass away. And then there's a moment where there's a connection with the person and they understand that, that I'm with them, you know, here I am, I'm here with you. I'm here to support you in this journey. They feel heard, they feel validated, and then they feel calmer. And then they can access a deeper part of themselves. So that's how I work with, with racing thoughts. And if I'm working with my own racing thoughts, not that I really have them so much anymore, but um, if something happens and it frightens me or whatever, the first thing I do is I deal with my emotions and I deal with that by physical exercise. It's really important to get out there and forward motion, whether that's walking, running, swimming, cycling, jogging, anything that gives you forward motion is really provides a huge amount of relief to be able to clear your mind. And so the first level is always deal with the emotions first right. and never take action from that emotional place. Just wait until you find a calmer place within yourself and then reflect on what the best course of action would be from there. And so I help people get to that place. I like that. So when you say deal with your emotions, in your case, that means ex physical exercise, right? Which well, it just means allowing the arising and passing away of emotion. Right. And uh, I also believe the same, like accepting, acknowledging your emotions. Because people want yeah. to control their emotions. They want to get mm -hmm. rid of their emotions. And then when, <laughs> this is when, when problems start, you know, when, when, you, when you want to get rid of that, when you want to control your emotions. Uh, exactly yeah right i like that and I, I like what you said also with your clients uh you let them talk you let them talk so you you let those racing thoughts you know play out you know do whatever they want to do and mm -hmm. at some point you know they realize that this is not serving them 
because it makes them feel uh, in a negative way. That, that makes them, it, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not serving them. It's, it's a powerful mm -hmm. thing to, for someone to believe that this is not serving me. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm doing is, is not serving me. Right. Yeah, so all the, all the work I do is all around awareness. The moment you're aware of something is the moment that the possibility of letting it go exists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 